Hello everyone, this is Urvashi Chahan and you are watching Quotes Today by Live Law, your one-step destination to all legal developments in the country. Let us start. Starting with an important update from Uttar Pradesh, gangster politician Mukhtar Ansari died last night allegedly due to a heart attack. He was elected as a member of the Legislative Assembly from the Mao constituency of Uttar Pradesh five times. Ansari, who was facing more than five dozen cases, had been in jail since 2005. He was an accused in the case involving the murder of BJP leader Krishnanand Rai and various other cases. 63-year-old Ansari passed away shortly after being urgently taken to the Rani Durgavati Medical College in the Banda district yesterday night. His death has triggered accusations of foul play from his family. His son Umar Ansari has claimed that his father was fed poison in his food on 19th March, which ultimately resulted in his death. A chief judicial magistrate's court in the Banda district has ordered a judicial inquiry into his death. The chief judicial magistrate has appointed Garima Singh, the additional chief judicial magistrate of MPMLA court, as the officer in charge of the inquiry and a report has been sought within a month. Let me tell you, in December last year, the state of Uttar Pradesh had assured the Supreme Court that Ansari's protection would be ensured in jail. The statement was made in a plea moved by his son, apprehending serious and imminent threat to his father's life, who was lodged in the Banda jail in Uttar Pradesh. The Calcutta High Court has directed for personal appearance of a Kolkata traffic police sergeant who was accused of illegally and forcibly seizing a lawyer's driving license. A single bench of Justice Amrita Sinha was told that the sergeant in question had caused a similar incident with another lawyer and on that occasion he had taken a bribe of 500 from him. It was also stated that the particular officer had a history of such offences and had even refused to notice of the present writ petition. Accordingly, the bench adjourned the matter and called for an affidavit from the accused officer as well as his personal appearance to respond to the allegations. A sessions court at Palanpur in Gujarat's Banaskantha district has sentenced former IPS officer Sanjeev Bhatt to 20 years jail in the 1996 drug planting case. A fine of Rs 2 lakh has also been imposed upon him. In 2018, the former IPS officer was arrested under the directive of the Gujarat High Court for his alleged involvement in a case where a Rajasthan-based lawyer was falsely implicated by the Banaskantha police for possessing 1.5 kg of opium at a hotel in 1996. Bhatt, who was serving as a district superintendent of police at the time, was implicated along with I.B. Vyas, an inspector with the local crime branch. Further, in 2021, Vyas turned a prover in this case. The prosecution alleged that Bhatt and others had conspired to frame the lawyer under the NDPS Act. Also last year, the Gujarat High Court dismissed Bhatt's plea seeking the transfer of his trial in the drug planting case to a court in Banaskantha district. Let me also tell you, Bhatt is presently serving a sentence of life imprisonment in a custodial death case. The Allahabad High Court has observed that Uttar Pradesh prohibition of unlawful conversion of Religion Act 2021 applies not only to marriages but to relationships in the nature of marriage or live-in relationships. This act enacted by the Uttar Pradesh government is aimed at preventing any conversions from one religion to another by means of misrepresentation, force, undue influence, coercion or by any fraudulent means. It also requires individuals who wish to convert to another religion to provide prior notification to the district authorities. A bench of Justice Renu Agarwal was hearing a protection plea filed by an interfaith couple. They moved the court stating that they were living as wife and husband and that the respondent in the case was interfering in their marital life. They also apprehended danger to their life and liberty. On the other hand, the counsel for the state opposed their plea as it was argued that the petitioners had not applied for the conversion of religion. The court, while dismissing the protection plea, noted that the couple had not applied for registration of any conversion under the provisions of the Act. The court added that while the courts have the power to interpret when there is ambiguity in the provisions of law, 
but the 2021 law is explicit which mandates that conversion is required not only in cases of intercaste marriages but in relationships in the nature of marriages too. Hence, it's said that the courts should refrain from embarking upon the interpretation of the law in any sense when the law is itself very clear. In another update, the Delhi High Court has observed that Article 21A of the Constitution is only for free and compulsory education till the age of 14 and does not confer on any child a constitutional right to be educated in a particular school of his or her choice. The court here was dealing with a plea moved by a seven-year-old girl through her mother seeking a direction upon a school to grant her admission as an economically weaker section student in class 2 for the academic session 2023-24. The draw of lots was conducted by the Directorate of Education following which she was shortlisted for admission to class 1 in Maharaja Agrasen Model School for the academic session 2022-23. It was her case that despite her mother visiting the school on several occasions, the school refused to admit her. It was submitted that the school could not have refused to grant admission to her after her name was shortlisted for admission following the computerized draw of lots conducted by the Directorate of Education, that is DOE. Justice C. Harish Shankar noted that it was undisputed that the girl did not apply to the DOE for admission as an EWS student in class 2 for the academic year 2023-24. Therefore, without such an application, her name was not included in any draw of lots for admission under the EWS category. Further, the court added that if a child is selected for admission to a school under the EWS category but fails to secure a spot for any reason and does not take any legal action during that academic year, they cannot claim a right to admission in the same school for the following year to a higher class just because they were shortlisted the previous year. Thus, while rejecting the prayer for admission, the court, however, directed the DOE to make every endeavor to ensure that the girl is granted admission as an EWS student in some other school. And lastly, the National Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission has reiterated that consumer fora do not have the jurisdiction to entertain claims involving motor vehicles. Such claims can only be adjudicated by Motor Accident Claim Tribunal by virtue of Section 165 of the Motor Vehicles Act. In this case, the complainants sought compensation from a bus agency for the loss caused to them due to the bus catching fire during their journey. The passengers had to vacate the bus, but their belongings and luggage worth of 50,000 rupees were destroyed in the fire. Complainants sent a legal notice to the bus agency seeking compensation for their loss. However, no resolution was provided. Therefore, they approached the district commission which allowed the complaint. Dissatisfied with this, the bus agency appealed to the state commission. The state commission accepted their appeal and amended the district commission's order directing the insurance company to pay the compensation instead of the bus agency. Subsequently, the insurance company filed a revision petition before the NCDRC and contended that Consumer Fora did not have the jurisdiction to entertain claims by third parties against insurers for damages involving motor vehicles. On the other hand, the bus agency contended that the insurance policy itself included a provision regarding damage to third party property. Under this provision, the insurance company was obligated to compensate for the damages arising from third-party risks. Citing relevant legal precedents and provisions of the Motor Vehicles Act, the NCDRC concluded that the State Commission made an error in altering the District Forum's decision. The NCDRC determined that the District Forum correctly held the bus agency responsible for compensation without implicating the insurance company. Thus, the revision petition was allowed and District Forum's initial verdict was upheld. Thank you for watching. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.